This is a follow-up to my previous one 2.1 video that focused on text-to-video. This video will focus on the image-to-video functionality. If you're interested in more details about WAN 2.1 and using its text-to-video functionality, then it's worth taking a look at that previous video for all the details. In this video, we'll step through the quick and easy installation of WAN 2.1 for image-to-video and the key settings in the workflow that you'll need to know about to tweak for your own generation needs. If you already followed and installed everything with my previous WAN 2.1 text-to-video tutorial, then the good news is, you can skip over most of the steps in this video. The only steps that are different and specific to WAN 2.1 image to video are step two for the image to video diffusion models, step five for the image encoder, step six for the image to video workflow download, and step eight for the run through of the new image to video workflow key settings. So you can just jump straight to those sections. I'll leave all the timestamps for the steps in the description below to make jumping easy for you. I'll be running through everything on a Windows PC using ComfyUI Desktop, running an 8GB NVIDIA GPU, 80GB of RAM, and an SSD. I'll leave all the links and references that I cover in this video in the description below for you. Let's start off taking a quick look at some actual videos that I generated on my machine that only has an 8GB GPU. For all of the generations, I use the smallest 14B. 480p FP8 scaled image to video 1 2.1 model. So if you use any of the larger models, you can expect much better quality results. I did try to run the 14B 720p FP8 scaled model as well to compare the differences. But unfortunately, it was just too much for my 8 GB GPU and just returned an out of memory generation error. Which I was surprised at since it's the same 16.4 GB size as the 480p model that runs just fine on my machine. All of these generations pretty much took the same exact amount of time to generate, which was around 19 minutes. They were all 832 by 480 pixels in dimension, a video length of 3 seconds or 49 frames, 16 FPS and all at 20 steps. The videos are not perfect but they're pretty decent. All of the initial images were generated with Flux FP8. At first, I just uploaded the image and added a text prompt, specifically detailing the camera and image movement that I wanted in the video. Maybe it was just me, but on many occasions, the results were just not very good at all. So I then copied in the original image text prompt, added the same camera and image movement that I wanted, and the results were vastly better, which are the results that you're looking at now. It's worth pointing out that I didn't use the original image seed. I just used random seeds for the image to video generations from these images. So if you're not getting the best results, sticking to your original image especially, you may want to try including the original image prompt text as well. Anyway, hope these gave you a better picture of what you can expect using the very smallest and lowest quality WAN 2.1 model in terms of results in low VRAM generation times. The first step is to update Comfy UI. We'll need at least version 0.3.18 to run the WAN 2.1 models. If you're using the Comfy UI desktop version, then it will update automatically next time you launch it. For all other Comfy UI versions, you'll just need to go into your Comfy UI manager and update it manually from there. Okay, that's Comfy UI updated. On to the next step. The second step is to download the WAN 2.1 image to video diffusion models that we want to use. We'll open the Comfy UI WAN 2.1 Hugging Face page in our browser. Then we'll open the Split Files folder. Then the Diffusion Models folder. We're interested in the I2V models for image to video in the top half of the list. There's a number of image to video models here, and they're all 14 billion parameter models. As you'd expect, the 480p models generate videos in 480p and the 720p models in 720p resolution. With my 8GB GPU, I can only run the 480p FP8 simple or scaled models. The FP8 scaled seems to often give me better results over the FP8 simple. If you have a bigger GPU, then you can download one of the larger models for better quality results. We'll download the 480p FP8 scaled model, which is the default one that we use in the workflow. We'll click the download file icon to the right of it. We'll save the file in our Comfy UI, Models, then Diffusion Models folder. 
Okay, that's the text-to-video diffusion models done. On to the next step. The third step is to download the text encoders that we want to use. We'll go back to the split files folder, then into the text encoders folder. There's a choice between FP16 and FP8 formats. The FP16 should generally give us better results, and even though it's just over 11 gigabytes in size, it runs fine with my 8 gigabyte GPU, and possibly even a 6 gigabyte GPU, although it will be slightly slower than the FP8 text encoder format. You may want to download both and compare them for yourself. For our purposes, we'll download the FP8 format, which is the default one that we use in the workflow. We'll click the download file icon to the right of it. We'll save the file in our comfy UI, models, then text encoders folder. Okay, that's the text encoders done. On to the next step. The fourth step is to download the VAE. We'll go back to the split files folder, then into the VAE folder. There's only one VAE file. We'll click the download file icon to the right of it. We'll save the file in our comfy UI, models, then VAE folder. Okay, that's the VAE done. On to the next step. The fifth step is to download the image encoder, which is an additional file needed for image to video used for our input image. We'll go back to the split files folder, then into the clip vision folder. There's only one clip vision file. We'll click the download file icon to the right of it. We'll save the file in our comfy UI, models, then clip vision folder. Okay, that's the image encoder done. On to the next step. The sixth step is to download the WAN 2.1 image to video workflow that we'll open and use in Comfy UI. The Comfy team has provided example workflows, which only use Comfy native nodes, so there's no need to install any additional custom nodes to run them. Although they're separate for 80p and 720p workflows, depending on which model you're using. They're basically identical just with different default models and a change in video dimensions. However, the workflows only save the generated videos in WebP or WebM formats. I've combined these original workflows, cleaned it up and modified it to now save in any video format, including MP4. We'll be using this modified workflow in this video. However, it requires us to install the additional Comfy UI Video Helper Suite custom node, which we'll do in the next step. Let's download the modified WAN 2.1 image to video workflow that we'll use. We'll open the workflow page in our browser and scroll down a bit. We'll click the download workflow button. We'll save the file in our comfy UI, user, default, and then workflows folder. Okay, that's the workflow done. On to the next step. The seventh step is to install the comfy UI video helper suite custom node required to use the modified workflow. In Comfy UI, we'll click Manager, then Custom Nodes Manager. We'll make sure we have the filter set to All. And in the search box, we'll type in Video Helper Suite. The Comfy UI Video Helper Suite custom node will be shown in the results. We'll just click Install. For version, we'll choose Latest, then click Select. The custom node will install. Then we just need to click Restart to restart Comfy UI and apply the custom node. Okay, that's the custom node installed. On to the next step. The eighth step is to take a look at the key settings of the workflow that you'll want to know about to make adjustments for your own video generation needs. Let's open the WAN 2.1 image to video workflow that we downloaded. As you can see, it's actually a pretty simple and straightforward workflow. It's basically the same as the text-to-video workflow, except that it has the additional clip vision image encoding node and input image node. Let's start with the model loading and setup group. The clip name is the specific text encoder file that we want to use. The default is set to the FP8 that we downloaded, but you can also select the alternative FP16 here if you wanted to use that higher quality one. The UNET name is the actual WAN 2.1 diffusion model that we want to use. It's set at the default 480p, FP8 scaled model that we downloaded, 
but you can select any of the WAN 2.1 image to video models that you download and want to use here. The load clip vision node at the bottom is where we specify the image encoder that we downloaded. Next, we have the input image loading group. Just click choose file to upload and then select the image to be used. Let's move on to the prompt encoding group. Both nodes are pretty much self-explanatory. Just override the default text with your own positive text prompt in the top node and your own negative prompt in the bottom one. As I mentioned before, I've had more success with including the original image prompt and adding in camera movement and image movement details in the positive prompt. You may want to test different formats to see what works best for you. Let's move on to the latent video creation group. This is where we make adjustments for the size and length of the video that we want to generate. Keeping in mind whether you're using a 480p or 720p model. For the 480p models, 832 by 480 are optimal dimensions. For the 720p models, you can move this up to 1280 by 720 pixels. For square aspect ratios, 512 by 512 for 480p and 768 by 768 for 720p. The default video length has been set at 33, which generates a 2-second video at 16 frames per second. The latent frame number cuts off a frame or two from the actual generated video. So when we calculate the number of frames for our desired video length, we'll need a higher latent frame number. Just multiply your video frame rate, which is set in the workflow at 16, by the number of seconds required. Enter this value in the length field, and it will automatically increase that number appropriately. Let's move on to the latent video generation group. The default settings are the most common and work well, but you can adjust these for your own specific needs. The control after generate has been set as default to randomize to produce a different seed for every generation, but you can change this value if you wish. The default generation steps have been set to 20, which is lower than the default of 30 in the text-to-video workflow. You can adjust the CFG and sampler settings appropriately if needed. Let's move on to the final video combination and saving group. This is where we're using our video helper suite custom node. The default settings are the most common and work well, but you can adjust these for your own specific needs. The frame rate that we set here will be the base number that we'll use to calculate the latent video length that we talked about previously. A frame rate using the default number of 16 will be fine for most purposes, but increasing this number, for example, to 24, will give smoother videos, but of course will take longer to generate. The default video format of MP4 has been set, but you can select from any of the many formats available. Okay, that's the key settings for the workflow done, and everything covered for this WAN 2.1 image to video tutorial. Hope you found this video helpful, and I'll catch you in the next one.